Welcome to the lesson bank, the ultimate classroom hack. Okay, I am excited to show you guys this. I hope this helps you. It's definitely helped me. So here's kind of our roadmap of what we're gonna talk about in this tutorial. First of all, we're gonna talk about what? What is the lesson bank, the CLB, the PLB, all those things you keep hearing but you're not sure what it is. Then we're gonna talk about how to use it and then we're gonna talk about the collaborative lesson bank um, kind of in more detail. So the skills, the keyboard commands you need, the formatting, contributing to the CLB, and then how to actually get started. So first up, what? So you kind of want to think about what's your prep time. You have on one side of the <laughs> one side of it, you have the Bear Grylls. You're prepared for everything and you're spending way too long, honestly. You're spending a lot of time when you're not getting paid. And on the other side, you have the people who wing it. They're not doing anything and most of the time that goes okay, but sometimes that doesn't go okay. But the reality is is it doesn't need to be either or. If you have the resources, you can cut that prep time way, way, way down all the time. And actually all the time you're not getting paid, you can cut it way down, um, but still be just as prepared as if you were Bear Grylls-ing it. So that's kind of what the beat or the heart of the lesson bank is. So there's kind of an overview of how the lesson bank works and what it is. So we are taking our VIP kids schedules and we're putting it in a personal bank. And from the personal, or in our personal bank, we're pulling from the CLB resources. So we have this re huge resource, and I'm gonna talk about what everything that's in it coming up. But we have this big bank of full of resources, and we're putting it into our personal banks, and then we're using that in class. So we have our classroom, as you can see here, and then we have these resources alongside it at the same time. So that then you, ha you look like Bear Grylls, but you're at, you're at a wing it level type of preparation, even though uh, you could do, you could still do prep or you're not doing any prep, but you have all the resources so resources so you can cut that time way down. So you want to think about the collaborative lesson bank that's the CLB as a library. It is our library that is open to all VIP kid teachers. Um, and it holds all of the resources, very much like a library does. The CLB is just this big resource bank of um, VIP kid stuff from teachers. So it's free to access for any VIP kid teacher. Also, it's collaborative. So if you have something great to contribute, we want it in the CLB and you can put it in there. So this is an open doc for any VIP kid teacher. It is free to access. You can come join, put in your great ideas and we want them. Um, and then, but but because it is an open edit doc, because anyone who has it can edit it and update it, then a quiz is required. So I do a quiz to just show basic competency in Google Sheets and that you did this training. If you do this training, you will be able to pass the quiz. Um, it's like getting your library card. Not just anyone can go take books willy-nilly. The library would get trashed. Very similar to the lesson bank. You pass the quiz. It's pretty basic stuff. And then you get your library card. And then you can access the collaborative lesson bank. So kind of zooming in a little bit, here's how you can access the resources from the CLB and get them to that personal doc. The first way is the Express Personal Lesson Bank. So this one costs 30 bucks one time um, and you don't have to have the CLB actually <laughs> because it automatically pulls all the lessons and all the resources for specific lessons from the CLB. So if you, this seems overwhelming or you're new or you're not very tech savvy, the Express is the way to go. Um, so there's, because there's no quiz, there's no training, all you're doing is you're getting the resource, resources. Um, you don't have to get that library card because it comes straight to you and then you can have those resources for classing. The second type is if you're like, I got time, but I don't got money. <laughs> then the free version is for you. That's the a la carte personal lesson bank. And the a la carte is free, but it does require that you get access to the CLB. And so because of that, then you need to do the training, get all of the, um, and take the kit, pass the quiz. So once you pass the quiz and you're in the CLB, um, then you can do the a la carte method. And, but honestly, it's a little bit slower. That's the one downside is the schedule, the schedule generating is slower. The, a good way to think about it is if the collaborative lesson bank is a library, then the person, the express personal lesson bank is 
DoorDash. <laughs> so it's going, getting your books from the library for you and bringing them to your door. So for one time, 30 bucks, then it's always automatic schedule generating. So it's quick and easy. Um, whereas the a la carte method is like you're driving to the library and getting your books and coming back. So that still totally works. Any teacher can have it, it's free. Um, so that's the free method of how to get the information from the CLB into your personal doc. Okay, so let's talk about what is in the CLB or the collaborative lesson bank. See, there you have it. First thing, CLB is the collaborative lesson bank. Um, so the collaborative lesson bank 2.0 is what we're on right now. That may update. So if that is, just go with 3.0. <laughs> It'll be the same. Um, is a shared docs. So like I said, it's open to all VIP kid teachers. Anyone can have it. We do want you to be a hired VIP kid teacher, but if you are, you can get it and anyone can edit it, update it, and it changes it for everyone, which is great if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, you can mess things up. Um, so that's why we do this. We train you and then you get your library card. So then you're confident and comfortable in the library. <laughs> so it's a Google Sheet, which is basically the Excel of Google. Um, it's also, so inside it, it has the VIP Kid Lessons. We have almost every single VIP Kid Lesson. We don't have everyone, but almost every single one. And all the PPT details and info that make your teaching easier and your non-paid time faster. This is not about recreating the wheel. This is not about spending extra time. This is a, exactly about not recreating the wheel and making it go faster so you're not wasting your time and you're only spending time when you're getting paid to do so. The second thing that's in it, are we have all the best VIP kid resources. So if there are teachers out there doing something awesome, we try and contact them and get them to add it. So instead of trying, especially new teachers and even veteran teachers, I have been around and then suddenly there's something that I didn't know about and I'm shocked and then it's like, oh, why didn't I know about this? Um, and I see that a lot. I see that all the time on all these resource pages. Why didn't I know about this? So this is an attempt to say, instead of having to be spend all this time finding them, here's one place where you can find all the best resources. So that is kind of your one-stop shop. <clears throat> so that's the think, library resources for the collaborative lesson bank, the CLB. So now let's talk about what lesson information. So specifically, what are the columns that are included when you, we say, oh, you have all these lesson resources. What are you talking about? So this is what we're talking about. So the lesson details, we have an outline of this whole PPT. So slide by slide, everything that's on the slide. So this is great for pacing. This is great for knowing what's coming up. And because it's a good rule to say a minute per slide. It's a better rule to know if that slide's gonna take 15 seconds or if that slide's gonna take three minutes. And when you know what's coming up, <clears throat> you, it totally changes your teaching because you can pace and you can master it and you don't look like an idiot because you're not just clicking and seeing what's on it. And you, you don't have to be Rain Man. You can look at your lessons before, but only Rain Man would be able to remember every single slide <laughs> in succession. So you don't have to, but you'll still have that polished look because you can just navigate an overview. We also have all the VIP kid goals, which are the objective, vocabulary, sentences, senten sentence patterns, and gra grammar. That's also included in it. And then we have the VIP kid reward system. This can be changed and edited for what you actually did, so you can track your reward systems with students specifically. Now, the, here's the additional tools and information, and this is where you, we get people uh, kind of individually, because everyone, it's funny, people will ask for, for certain things, and then I, <laughs> everyone thinks they know what the lesson bake is until you actually use it, and then you're like, oh, I had no idea it had so much stuff in it. Um, so here's where it hits. We have in-class student notes. So if you want to take notes, and as most people do, take notes about certain students, this is where you can do it. You can write all your notes like, they love Coca-Cola, oh, they live in Xi'an, oh, they live, blah, blah. whatever it is, you can take your student notes and you're not filling up binders, you're not filling up folders, you're not filling up notebooks, it's all right there. Um, so we can have that student info, performance notes, um, how they did in the lesson. And then also we have physical props and rewards. So if you're a physical prop and rewarder, here's where you don't have to click through the whole lesson to find out what's in it. You can go here, straight to here, and it'll say, oh, these are the suggested things that might work well. So then you can look through and go, oh yeah, I have that and that. And then you know you grab those things just really quickly. So even just 10 seconds before the lesson starts, you can gla glance at it and go, oh yeah, this is what I need, and grab it and you're ready to go. 
Um, the other are digital rewards. So if you're a digital user, Minicam rocks. All the different versions of having digital rewards rocks. Enough so that VIP Kid is starting to implement it. But we're like advanced levels, and they just started in kindergarten. <laughs> Which I'm glad they did. But anyone who uses it knows that it's nothing compared to what we actually do. But the time waste on it is that you have to go find all the things. You have to search through the bank and find rewards and find uh, things that fit for that lesson. And that's what we've done. We've all, uh, teacher Ellie has put in her resource bank. Um, Megan has put in her Google Slides. We ha so we have per lesson, so we have the banks. So you can still look through the banks and do that if you want to. But per lesson, we have digital rewards um, and props suggested for that specific lesson. And it's growing. And if you are great at it, we want you to come and add your things too. So that's a huge selling point for if you're a digital reward user. If you're not, it doesn't matter. It's just one column and you don't even have to look at it. Um, the other, are, other thing we have, we have lesson notes. So th these are the heads up about that lesson. So not about the student about the lesson because not every lesson is the same. Some lessons have tons of content and you got to book it. You got to keep moving and keep your pacing and you're not going to get through it. Whereas other lessons are pretty dry. You need to have a little extension and you need to be extending throughout the lesson or you're going to be you're going to finish this lesson at 20 minutes and you're going to have at least five minutes and five minutes is so long to fill in. So these are all the things that you wish you would have known. Now we also have teaching tips and tricks. So if and this is what we have on Facebook all the time. How do you guys teach this slide? How do you teach bossy? E? How do you teach whatever it is? This is where you can film your little video and put it in. Or if you have, like, you, maybe you have just a written explanation of what you do for it. All those tips and tricks of how to teach the lesson, we have a column for it. So when you're look previewing your lesson, you can go, oh, yeah, I have no idea how to teach that. I'd love to see how that teacher teaches it. And then you can click on their link and see it. And we've collected all these per lesson. And we have feedback templates. This is the other really big one. And this is not to copy and paste generic feedback. That is not our jam at the lesson bank. What it is is it's not recreate it's it's not recreating the wheel. So all the niceties that you say introducing like okay, so today we learned about this. It was so nice to see your student. This is what we did. All of that is already there, and we have it in a way that you we can do a find and replace, a quick find and replace template, so that you put in. Uh, what's in there, you put in the name and then automatically it generates that template for you. So that then it just says, oh, it was so nice to see Leo today. Today in Leo's class, this is what we went over. And then you can personalize it because you took those student notes and quickly put it in. So whether you do it right after class, you can, it's fast enough and easy enough, you can do it right after class, in between classes. Or if you're waiting till you're done teaching, then you're not forgetting. That's the problem is oftentimes we forget about all those little things uh, those micro things that they did in the lesson um, and and then we don't communicate them to the parent but now because we have a simple way to take notes in class and then it's saved for us and because the templates already there then we can put those we can take the time putting the details in so then you have this beautiful detailed feedback to the parent that looks like it took a really long time to write but it took you a minute or maybe two minutes but it's very specific and it's showing that you have a learning path and you were very intentional during your lesson so it's awesome the feedback templates rock okay so that's the what personal lesson bank plb clb is a collaborative lesson bank as a whole, we're called the the lesson bank. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk about how to actually use the lesson bank. So we've talked about what's in there. How do we actually use it? So this is how we use it. This is what it looks like in its full, all the different columns. And this is how we use it. So before class, I'm going to be looking at the lesson goals, the prop notes, the digital rewards and props, the reward system, and the teaching tips. So then I can get a good preview of what, what I might want to get ready but it's all at a glance. It's all there for me already. And then if I want to preview the lesson, the slides, if you're a new teacher and you're looking through all the slides, now we have an outline to remind you so you could glance through that. If you're a veteran teacher and you wing it because you've taught most of them, um, then you can just glance through it if you want or you can look through these to see if there's anything that will help with quality. Now during class I'm looking at these three. I'm looking at the lesson outline so again I can pay so if those uh, darn flashcards <laughs> or the dice game comes up the ones where it like it seems like you have a ton of lessons or a ton of slides and then suddenly those are like 
flip through them easy. Or you get to the end and this song is Five Little Monkeys and you cannot do Five Little Monkeys in 20 seconds. And so now you're sort of screwed. <laughs> it helps you gauge all of those so that then you can pace your lesson a little bit better. And also we obviously have the in-class notes um, so that it's quick and easy to take notes. And then we have the lesson goals, those things that we were really emphasized and were lived and died by in the mocks and then suddenly may or may not have ever looked at them again those things. So they're right there, right in your face, so you know what you should be working on, specifically what said sentence patterns you should be trying to uh, reiterate throughout the lesson. Now after class, I'm going to be, again, taking those in-class notes and I'm going to paste them into my feedback. As you can see, here's our little template so we know what to find and what to replace it with. And we put it in here and then we snag those in-class notes to help jog, even just having the outline here already written and having the lesson outline here while you're writing your feedback totally changes your feedback because just seeing an outline of it you go, oh yeah we talked about that oh and I remember they did this so even in that way it makes your feedback go so much faster and we also have these class tags so that if something outstanding happens in your class um, then you can put the a tag on it like oh this was an amazing TPR moment or maybe something odd happened like uh, like you had a student IT or a student no show or something that you might want to come back and revisit this or maybe they had some student IT issues where they were gone for a while and it's like oh, I better tag this just in case I need to find this lesson again to reference it then you can tag that and you can search for those quickly so that's how you use it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how, how to actually generate those classes, how that Express PLB and the a la carte work um, in getting that information from the collaborative lesson bank into your personal bank. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy, so quick and easy, the Express personal lesson bank is. So all you have to do is come to your VIP Kids site copy the lessons you want to do, come over to your personal lesson bank, slap those bad boys in, paste them in here, and all I have to do is push this button. <gasps> Dun -da -da -da. I push the button, it goes to the collaborative lesson bank, pulls all that sweet, sweet information and puts it in. And as you can see, the formatting's all crazy. Nobody wants that. So we have this built-in tab, you click here, and boom, they're all right there, already ready, ready to look beautiful to confirm. So you have Grace, Amy, and Henry and River, <laughs> Grace, Amy, Amy, Henry, River. So as you can see, it automatically pulls them in and formats them. So then all I have to do is copy these, copy, and I put them in my schedule right here. And I do this so that then I can take notes on all of these lessons and they'll save them. Schedule Maker generates it, formats it, and then all I have to do is paste them in here. And now I'm ready to go. Easy as that. Now I can put it in my with my lessons. And I can have all the resources at my disposal. <laughs> so easy! Okay, so now we're going to watch the a la carte version. So if you do not want to pay 30 bucks and you got time, not money, this version is for you. Um, okay, take it away. Now, second level, my a la carters. If you do not want to pay $30 and have it automatically generate totally okay. You do not have to pay to use the collaborative lesson make and have that as a lesson prep system. So this is how you would do it. And I'm going to start all the way from the beginning. So brand new people, you're going to go to Google Drive. This is your very first step. If you do not have a Google account, make a Google account first. That's your very first step. <laughs> Assuming you have, a, have one, then you're going to come to Google Drive. Okay, so now this is Google Drive. You just Googled it. Or if you're logged in, you can come, to, you click on here. Or if you're already logged in up here on your toolbar, if your toolbar is showing uh, the bookmarks, then you can go to Show Apps, Google Drive. Either way you want to get there. And then your personal Google Drive is going to pop up. All you're going to do is come to New, and you want a new sheet. And it's going to come up. And you want to name this my personal lesson bank or Sarah's personal lesson bank. So I'm going to do demos lesson bank. 
so that I know it's not mine, <laughs> that it's a demo for this video. So you're going to name it Your Name's Lesson Bank. This is your, the, voila, you've made it. This is your lesson bank. It doesn't look like anything yet. And then you're going to come to the Collaborative Lesson Bank. Again, you have to, the, lesson, the Collaborative Lesson Bank is like the library and you got to get a library card. We just want to make sure you know basic things so that you're not, uh, messing it up <laughs> that's it I just want to know that you can like copy and paste and navigate in a very basic form okay so once you're here that and you have okay so you have your demo one and now you're coming to the collaborative lesson bank you want to come here to this a la carte template and all you're gonna do is right click on the a la carte template right click come up here to copy to not duplicate not anything else copy to once you click copy to this pop-up is going to come up and you want to click this demo lesson bank it should be right there because you just made it if you have any trouble finding it you can do recent and it should pop up or you can search it so it's not showing up but I know that I named it demos lesson bank oh and then it'll come up right there you select that either way in that one I just did or click the little picture of it and then it'll say copied or sheet copied successfully and you say okay you're done for the moment with the collaborative lesson bank. You're gonna come back over here to your demo sheet and you'll go, what, Sarah, it didn't work. It did work. Just look down here at the bottom and the second tab will be your tab. So that means you can right click on the first sheet and delete it. You don't need this one anymore. So delete that. Heads up, you're gonna delete it. Yes, I want to. And now we wanna change the name. So double click on that tab and you wanna name this My Classes. So these will be all your classes and you can do a new tab per month or per year or use the same one forever. Doesn't matter. This is your personal bank. This is not shared with anyone. No one else has access to this. I don't have access to this. This is a doc you made in your personal Google Drive and you copied it from the collaborative lesson make and now you have your thing. So now you have it. Um, you can delete row two. So click row two and then right click and delete because that was just the instructions of what I just taught you or showed you how to do. And now you have it. Here's your a la carte template and now you're go ready to go to your, the teacher's portal. So now you come to the teacher's portal and you highlight the classes that you want to do lessons for. So say I want to do these four and you're going to copy them and you're going to come back to your bank. I'm going to move this over here so it's closer and you're going to paste them in. Ta-da! And the formatting's crazy, so get rid of it. Clear the, I don't, well, this is what I like. You can do it however you want. Get rid of the borders, align it to the top, do the text wrapping, text wrap. This is overflow, this is clip, we want wrap. And I don't like colors in the background, so click this little paint bucket and do white. And if the colors are crazy, like this it is, then you go to the uh, A stamp and then click black. Okay, now you have it all formatted nicely. So now we're gonna do what I just showed you how to do in the very beginning. You select the lesson, the SN, copy it, come back over to the lesson make, make sure you're on the master lesson tab, and then control F. That find and sheet comes up, paste it in there, and it comes up. Now remember, only the orange. So select the first tab, scroll down here, select the last one where there's something, and then control copy. Come back over here and rem remember, align it with your blue. Control paste. First lesson done. Come over here, copy, come over to the command. It's already up. Replace it in there. Remember, light orange. So select the first one, scroll over, shift, select the last one, copy. Remember the blue. Paste. Second lesson's done. Again, copy the SN code, come over here, put it in the find in sheet, paste it in there. Remember your light orange, that's all we want. Highlight it, copy it, come over here, orange, or bright blue. <laughs> and then the last one, third one's done, last one, copy that SN code, come over here, put it in. And then, oh, that was, no, that's not even right. Okay. I'm, that's not the right one. <laughs> I will figure out why that, that one didn't because it should not be pulling that one up. Well, wrong one, but I'd fix that. I'll fix that. So anyway, that's how you do it. You command, you copy it, paste it, copy it, paste it, and now you have your lesson bank. You have 
you need to do this every time before you want to use these lessons, <clears throat> but it will work great. Now, if you, for any reason, have um, any questions, please let me know. Um, also, I recommend doing this, do your schedule like the night before or the day before so that you're not, so it has time that if your lesson changes, that you're pushing it, you're getting as close to it as possible, but you're not putting it off too long, if that makes sense. So now you have this and you can put this with your, uh, whatever, <laughs> what am I saying you guys? You can put it next to your classrooms tab and use it during your thing. I hope this helps. That is the a la carte pro method. If this gets tedious and you don't want to do this anymore, all you have to do is pay one time $30. It helps pay for the Express Personal Lesson Bank and for all the collaborative lesson bank maintenance. And so you pay one time 30 bucks and then this automatically generates and it's sweet and it's easy and it's amazing. But if 30 bucks isn't worth it, that is totally okay. This is how you do the a la carte method. Okay, that's all. Good job guys. Peace. You're like, okay, this sounds great, but I know this isn't going to actually fit on my screen because I teach on a tiny little screen. Um, the reality is I have a couple suggestions. I'm going to show you how to do it if you have a tiny screen. Um, but I also would suggest dual monitors. Getting two monitors or an, a wide monitor, that's what I have. I started with dual monitors and then I, moved, I upgraded to a widescreen monitor the one from Costco, the LG from Costco, and it's delightful. I highly recommend it, but it was pricey. So the cheap way is just go to like your secondhand store, go to Goodwill, go to Savers, go to whatever you have, and you can get monitors for like 15 or 20 bucks. I've had people tell me they got them for five bucks off indoor yard sale sites. Mine that I got, I got for 15 bucks. So they are not an expensive thing. They're not, they don't have to be hundreds of dollars by any means, and it will totally change just being able to have space. So I would recommend that but if you don't want to or if you're a mobile teacher you do not have to have dual monitors to to use the lesson bank not at all okay so I'm gonna show you um, how to adjust the things and how to format it so that you can do everything on one screen and my screens a 13 inch so it's tiny okay take it away here's your first one your first one is your classrooms tab and what you want to do you want to make it a little bit smaller so just click on that line <laughs> outside the border and drag it to a, a smaller size so you can move it around your tab first well first step have it in two different tabs so um, if if that's your problem then you just have your your one tab you opened up your classroom lesson and then right here you can click on a second tab um, and then open up your personal lesson bank I would highly recommend having a folder but check the folder video for that tutorial okay so now that you have two tabs then you just hold and drag it off and then it'll make another tab. So that's what I've done. Those were the first steps I have. So now I have two different browsers. Um, you wanna position <clears throat> your first one. And what I always do is I always position this one right under so that my student's picture is right under, you can't see it, but right under my camera. Um, because then if I'm looking at it, it's most aligned with the camera. So now that it's positioned with that, um, you want to drag it to the top so that the top line is where you want it and then drag this to resize it to be the right size that you want and I like it so that I can just see the stars at the top and then I can just see the very bottom of the classroom that's how big I want it and then this one I drag over so that I can see the chat box um, but it, and sometimes I don't need the chat box if it's a young kid and I know I'm not going to really be using it then I will resize it so that I only see a glimpse if uh, someone's like if the firemen start typing to me or mom and dad starts typing I can see it but I'm not wasting my screen space on it um, but older students and I definitely would have it open so anyway this is how big I want this then I get my second one and again go to the border and scroll it down um, and I put it so that the bottom is aligned with my bottom of my screen and then I drag this out resize it so then I can see if you use minicam I do this is where I fit my mini cam where my picture is and then right here is where it, like, if I'm using like an external website to do rewards or something that's where I put this so normally I just have it about this big so I'm gonna do it this size in case you have a really small screen my Mac is only a 13 inch so it's tiny um, and I you can still make it work so 
as you can see this is I mean this works okay but it's still really big so this is the trick that you want to do on Chrome right up here right so you have your like browser URL spot I'm sure that has a real name but right at the end there are these three dots you click on these three dots and this will pop up and then you can do the zoom and I go down to like 80 or 70 percent because look now it's even smaller so now to have the same amount of space or same thing that I'm seeing right at the top of the stars and to the bottom of the page look that's so much smaller but it's still all the same I can still have my lesson I can still see everything and the same with the collaborative lesson bank I still want this pretty big because I don't want the text to be too small um, so sometimes if I want it smaller then maybe I'll just go to 80 um, percent maybe see 80 seems small now 90 seems good so I zoom it to 90 um, and then when I have this I can even make this even bigger actually below it because all I need to see is I need to see the lesson and I just want to see the very top I don't even need to see the lesson outline but I can so I have my lesson here I can still do everything and then I can see my lesson this is uh, Rivers class so that would be the one I'd actually be using and so then I can make it all fit I can see everything and I don't actually care about this once I'm in the lesson so then I s scroll over so then all I'm seeing is the lesson outline outline my in-class notes and my lesson goals these are the ones I want to see during class the very most and then I can do that and see and look look at all this extra space I have so I have tons of space that I could use mini cam or my screen could be much smaller because this is a um, a little bit bigger <clears throat> view presently but that's how you do it just get those three put it that resize your two browser pages and then those three little dots to use that to access your zoom and then just zoom um, a little bit so that you're it's not quite so big and then everything can fit super easy quick and easy tip hope this helps have a fantastic day <laughs> I need to edit all the end of these, but I'm not going to. All right, bye guys. Okay, so now you've got the what, you've got the how, so now let's talk about the collaborative lesson bank tutorial, specifically um, the keyboard commands, uh, so that if you're not, if it's kind of like a Google Sheets 101 really quickly, how to do those quickly, um, and then how to format it. So if you're going to be a CLB user and you want to pass the quiz, we want you to know how to format. So that then you can contribute. The CLB is about contributing. It is not about just looking, going to the library and looking at the books and never actually like reading them or checking them out or or even writing your own book. Write your own dang book. <laughs> um, so then we're gonna talk about contributing. Okay, here we go. So keyboard shortcuts. So here is a list. If you're a PC user or if you're a Mac user, um, this would be a good one to screenshot. If you use the PLB, this is linked into your or the Express Personal Lesson Bank. If you're using that one, the buy one. If you buy that, we have this in it for your cheat sheet. Um, this is on the quiz, so you'll want to know it because you need to know the basics. These are all the basics. So I'm going to go through the PC one. Usually control is switched out by command if you're on a Mac. So copy is just control C, paste is control V, undo is control Z. And the, these are the big three. You know how to do these three? <laughs> you can basically do most of the most of what you need to do. Uh, the others are highlighting a chunk of rows. So a uh, a chunk of rows. Yeah, I said it pretty good. All you're going to do is click the first row, hold down shift, and click the last row. With those four, you can run the, P the Express Personal Lesson Bank. If, if everything else seems overwhelming, get the Express Personal Lesson Bank, do those four. <laughs> you don't need to do anything else. <laughs> um, if you're going to be an a la carte user, you definitely want to know the rest of them, um, which would be find in sheet, which is hold down control and click F. Um, clear formatting, so if you just want to get rid of all the formatting and everything that's on it, then you hold control and do backspace. Um, and then the find and replace feature, you hold control and H, and that's to do the find and replace, like you'll want to do that with feedback. So actually that was one, I should move find and replace up. So then it, you those five, copy, paste, undo, highlighting, and find and replace. With those, you could master everything. <laughs> and a good way to remember the find and replace is help, help me do my feedback, help me find it. Um, and then that is the find and replace, so help. Um, yeah. So. I re reference these a lot in the formatting and in everything, so this is your cheat sheet. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the actual formatting of the CLB. Um, so this is kind of like the, not the advanced, but if you're going to be a CLB user, this is what you want to know how to be, how to do and how to navigate and what I want you to know how to do so that again, you don't trash the library, <laughs> that you can navigate it confidently because we want you to be confident. We don't want you to be like, oh, I don't want to mess something up. <laughs> and it, you stick out like a sore thumb <laughs> when you go in and you don't know what you're doing because you create tabs and you move tabs around and you mess things up. So um, let's go through it so that you know what to do and that you're confident with it. So the first one, and this is a lot, but I'm going to step you through it. Don't you worry. This is the hardest one, the lesson outline. We're going to start with the hardest and then I put everything else in its own video because it's so easy. <laughs> so how we outline or how we format the outline, and this is valuable even if you're just doing the express version so that you can read it quickly. Now this is a special one. I didn't put in a regular one. This is a special one. Um, this is the new interactive ones or the advanced level, level six. The new lessons coming out from VIP Kid, we're going to format this way. Um, if it's not new, if it's the regular MC courses, we're just taking out these bracketed things and these um, title indicators and then it's exactly the same. So the basic formatting is you do the slide number colon abbreviated content. So as you can see one colon intro and then we separate everything with semicolon. So one colon intro semicolon. The semicolon means everything within that area is on one slide. So <clears throat> As you can see, um, it says if there is one for each slide, then you can see what's coming up and how many more slide, uh, slides will expand on that topic. So we want one per slide. The other thing is you can, uh, the different content on the same slide, you can use any of the following. So you can use commas, periods, uh, parentheses, quotations, forward slash, backslash, any of those you can use. Um, and, and then you, that's how you can navigate. All this stuff is on one slide. So if you look here, you can see like uh, slide number eight, we're learning feed or feeds. And then <clears throat> after that, we're going to have, oh, see, this should be slide number nine. Mistake, you guys. <laughs> I put a bad example in. So this should be slide number nine. And on slide number nine, it should be cir or circles on there and comma. She feeds the cat. That's all one uh, sentence that they should be learning. Um, and then another semi or another semicolon. So then we know all of this is on one slide. So I'm going to reiterate slide number colon abbreviated content. Um, and you can use any of the other all the common uh, punctuations. But when you're done with that slide, semicolon semicolons ch it means next slide. And then again, number colon abbreviated content semicolon next slide and we want to keep it short and abbreviated don't put long things if there's a specific target sentence it's okay to put that in um, but otherwise just put abbreviated because once you get long and wordy it's hard to at a glance see it we want short abbreviations okay now you stay on the same line as long as it's on one content so as you can hear we're talking about funny and then we're talking about a funny man funny pet funny girl okay and then we're doing a fill in the blank Fit B means fill in the blank. And then we're going to do, oh, slides 14 through 16 all reiterate what do you feed. So we're going to keep asking what do you feed. And all of those are going to be on the same thing. That's all the same content. And as you can see, this phonics, we're doing phonics. And then we're going to circle the phonics. And then we're going to draw and read. And it's all about the phonics. And as soon as it's not about that same topic, new paragraph, which is hold down control. We're right here or a command and enter. That's how you do a new line within a cell on Excel or Google Sheets. So then you do a new line. A new line means new topic, something else. So here we have our intro, our goals, reward, warm up song, and then now we're going to new content, new line. Okay, so those are the basic things. So slide, slide number, colon, abbreviated content, semicolon. You continue that pattern until the topic changes and then you bring it down to a new paragraph and you do the exact same thing. And you continue that all the way through for every single slide. Now, the exceptions to these rules, and that's why I have a, a picture here, is are the interactive slides and level six. And I would guess all new content, they're gonna be moving in this direction. And in, because they structure these new lessons differently, it's beneficial to have them titled or chunked 
into sections. So this vocabulary, the verbs, the high frequency words, the phonics, those are what I mean by titled or chunks. So that then you can see, okay, so from slide 17 to 20, or well, 17 to 19 is gonna be phonics, then to, uh, 20 we're gonna start grammar at, uh, we're going to start free talk at 23. So just at a glance, you can kind of see how long they're spending on the topic. And so we're going to put in um, the IPA, SF, and E's in brackets so we know if, uh, which type of slide it is. And then we do the chunks on that. And that's the same for, um, so level six isn't doing the IPA, E's, um, but they are they are chunked more like by here's the vocabulary, here are the high, not high frequency words, but here are the phonics, here are the grammar, that kind of thing. They are chunked in that way more. So that is how you navigate the lesson outline. Now remember, aligning, formatting, and doing it all the same helps keep it at a glance. We want it to be at a glance. If we all do our own formatting, uh, then we have to spend time figuring out how that person formatted it. So if you get one that's not formatted correctly, it happens. That's okay. Just go in the lesson bank or go in your personal bank, update it, and then copy that into the collaborative lesson bank and update it. All right, so that is how we format the outline. That is the hardest thing. Everything else is easy. That's it. that's basically the only thing that has specific formatting. Um, well, and feedback. So out, the lesson outline and feedback have specific formatting. Um, other than that, it's all just like copy and paste. It's really easy. So if you, this seemed like okay, you get, you're going to be great. Okay, so now let's watch. Oh, look, you can't see it at all. Formatting and updating <laughs> the CLB. So watch this video. This is going to be about how you do formatting specifically for all the rest of everything and then how you update the CLB. So when you're using your personal lesson bank, how you make updates and changes and add and blah, 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 and then how you get that back in the collaborative lesson bank uh, smoothly and easily. Okay. Okay, formatting in the CLB. <clears throat> Anytime you want to format and you have a question, just come to the doc orientation and below the information then there is the explanation of what I'm telling you right now and then there's an example below. So anytime you have a question, just come here, but we're gonna go step by step through it all. So all of this dark orange, as you can see, this is just the information that's copied over from uh, here, from the teacher portal on VIP Kids site. So we're not gonna talk about that because that's just copy and pasted from the site into your personal lesson bank. So we're going to be talking about this bright orange. So if you notice on the master lessons, we only have the SN code and the lesson name, but on your personal lesson bank, uh, you'll enter all that information. So now we're going to talk about what's in this bright orange section. So the first one is the lesson outline, and that we're going to talk separately because that one's the hardest spot. So we're going to outline that in the other uh, in the tutorial. The next one is our student in-class notes. The in-class notes are really easy because they're already in there for you. So you never <laughs> have to do those. <laughs> they're already in the master lessons. The next one would be the lesson goals. And the lesson goals comes directly from the teacher's portal. So if you come to the teacher portal and you come to this materials and once you open it, then it's this class info that will populate right here. And you simply highlight it, control C, or you can right click and copy, or if you're on a Mac, command copy. And then you come back to the lesson bank um, and you can go to the lesson, um, the master lesson, and then you paste in this lesson goals. And then props and lesson notes, these are personal things that you figure out would be valuable when you're teaching. Oftentimes this is easier to fill out after you've taught the lesson. Um, but you can go ahead and look at it before and after, whichever. And it's just, props are, any props you might think someone might want, not just props you used, but um, say like a baseball would have been really nice, I don't have one, but a baseball would be nice, and you'd throw that in there. And you just highlight, you just uh, label it, so like props, colon, and then list all the props. The other thing you can do is have, um, you can enter lesson notes. So if there's something that you wish you would have known <laughs> about that specific lesson um, before you taught it, but now you know it because it's after, put that in the notes section. So sometimes it's like, uh, if it's a really full lesson, keep to your pacing, there's a lot in here, you gotta keep moving. Or if there isn't very much, then it's gonna be like, have extensions because this lesson's a little dry. So those are the types of notes that uh, you might wanna put in there. Um, yeah, so chicken, beef, pork, 
pronouns, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the next are the digital rewards and props. So if you're a mini cam, cam twist, blah, 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 all the millions of options that are out there, <laughs> if you're one of those digital users, this rocks because this is the huge selling point because then you don't have to find new things every single day that relate to your lesson. That's what's here. So, or if you have one, if you are teaching a lesson and you're like, oh, this reward would be perfect or this would be awesome. All you're going to do is put the reward. If it's a reward, put reward and then say build a farm animals and the link to the site that you're doing it. Or if it's a prop, the link to the file or the Google Drive or whatever it is, just write what it is and put it in. So that could be Google Slides, that could be ManyChem files, that could be a website, any kind of digital thing goes in there. Then the next one is the reward system. So this would just be whatever reward is used in the lesson. So um, the way we want to do that, I'll just show you. Uh, you don't want to sit on this one. Well, we can. Okay, so say that we're doing this reward system. So you do whatever the background is and then um, forward slash the manipulative. So in this one, it would be there is no background. So like, so nothing forward slash mops and brooms, or if you're doing monkeys and bananas, it would be monkey forward slash bananas. Just so whatever um, is the suggested reward, it's in there. You do not have to use those ones. Um, this is a great place for if you, um, after you've taught the lesson or before you can track them right here, what you actually did. But what we put in the master lessons are just oh, like this monkey bananas, what the suggested one is. Then. After that, we have, um, da, 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 let's come back here, um, so that we did the reward system. Now we have tips and tricks. So if you have a tip and trick, a tip or a trick for how to teach something in that lesson specifically, let us know. Put what it is and then the link to your YouTube video. Or if you wrote it down, maybe you didn't have make a video, but you just wrote something down to, and it's on a file that you can share. Put that in there. There are lots of these. It can be anything. It could be like contractions or bossy e or... Uh, or if it, there's just a crazy slide in there all the time we see on Facebook, those ones, how do you guys teach this? If you see one of those and you have the answer, put it in that lesson entry. Let us know, like, don't get hung up on this slide, so you just put slide five and then explain how you te teach it. Um, that's what the tips and tricks are. So that's tips and tricks for this lesson specifically. And then after that, we have da -da -da -da, the bank feedback. And on the bank feedback, we want to write we want it to be very general. We don't want any performance reviews or things specific to that student. So we don't want to say things like this. It was nice to meet your child. Er, no, because what if it was a regular student um, coming back? And trials is the reason why is because this is a trial lesson. So you're going to have just met them. Um, and so then it would be appropriate. But on the uh, regular ones, we want it to be generic. So we want it to just say, it was nice to see your child today. And use your child instead of like his, her, or name or something. Write it so that you could copy and paste it and it would be generic, but it would be fine. That's the goal. Number one, no performance reviews. Number two, write it entirely as you would if it was copy and pasteable so that if something gets missed, you don't look like an idiot. If you do the him and her thing um, and you miss one, <laughs> then it looks real bad. So we want it to be as is copy and pasteable. And then after it, we want to write a performance review. So if you wrote something that indicated that they were able to do something, so it said like your child read this story, that in indicated an ability. And so then you would put positive. Or if it said continue practicing the vocabulary words, then that's something for them to work on. So that would be a negative performance review. So just put an asterisk, put if it's a positive or negative, and then put in the performance review. If you ever have any questions on the CLB, we have this tab key or feedback key descriptors explaining all of this um, so then it tells you what is the meaning of that what is the meaning of a positive what is the meaning of a negative what is the meaning of a positive or negative um, and then you want to do your find and replace now with the find and replace you put find and replace put a new line and then you're going to put in each thing that specifically for that specific feedback <laughs> The key is not shareable across other ones. It's just for that specific one. You want to put in what you're going to copy out to make it more personal. So for example, this one is a lowercase your child, and then we're going to replace it with a name with a capital N name. 
Oh, with an uppercase, your child, and then an uppercase, well, uppercase Y, lowercase C, because we don't, so sneak peek on the quiz, we would never write an uppercase C. <laughs> you would never say your child with an uppercase C, so if you ever see that, that would automatically be a bad one, or bad feedback. Um, and then the uppercase name. And so then you're telling the person coming after you or you the next time you do it, everything that you need to do in the find and replace feature um, to make it personalized to that specific student. So um, I will, there's a link, I will put a link to a specific video really outlining this in more detail if you have any more questions about it. We just want it to be generalized no performance reviews, we want it to be good as is, but no names, no specific things, and then we want the performance review and the key, the find and replace key. So those are the things we want for um, the bank feedback. Now, we have a bank feedback, we have an alternative bank feedback, and we have a two-parent feedback, and this is not for the CLB. So the reason why we have this we have two different options that you could put in for bank feedbacks. And so if you're just to have a different style of writing, if there's one, like for example, there isn't a second one here, great, put in a second one. So it's just so there's, like see how this one ha is numbered, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this one's written in paragraph form. So whichever your style, now you have two different options. And we do the same thing, we always put in that performance review and we always put in the find and replace. <clears throat> and then when you're in your personal lesson bank, that's where you fill out what you actually wrote to the parent that goes right here so let me open up my personal lesson bank really quick and I'll show you what this looks like so here's one option I have and then here's another option and this student's going to be who is it Amy so this is my personal lesson bank so I'm gonna pick one of these and then I'm gonna follow it and see if it works so for example here copy Okay, so now all of the ones that I actually write to my parents, I'm going to put here in my two parent feedback column. So that, when I want to search for what I actually wrote, it's here. But I keep these ones, the templates, so that then I can copy it back into the collaborative lesson make. That's the real important part, that we keep the, we don't change these, and we do change these. That's why in it, this column in the actual collaborative lesson bank is empty, because we're not that's where we're putting our parent our two parent one but in the personal lesson bank we don't want to edit these so that we can call if we make edits or updates while we're teaching like oh this would be a great, great prop or oh this is a good teaching tip or something that's great then we can caught easily and quickly copy it back to the collaborative lesson bank but still we have in our personal bank a, a record of what we actually wrote to the parents so you copy it over then you're going to do control H if you're on a PC or if you're on a Mac, you're going to do um, command shift H and it'll bring up this find and replace. And the way you want to remember H is help, help me write feedback. <laughs> help me, I want some help. So H for help. And then this will come up and you're going to just follow it exa exactly. So this one says it only used capital Y your child da -da 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 -da, and then I'm going to do Amy. And because there isn't anything else, I'm not going to match the case because there's a, not another one, but I just want to select specific range, so it's only selecting this one. If I do all sheet, it will do it in your entire lesson bank, so you don't want to do that. You just want the specific range and it'll be highlighted, see I can click around and then it, it would change, but this is the one that it's doing it for. So then I want to do replace all, and then done. So now let's see if it was a good one. We'll see right here live. So Amy did a fantastic job learning about people in my family today. We began by reviewing the letters and there's blah blah. Amy did an excellent job forming, oh see this was a positive performance review because it says Amy did an excellent job so and it indicated that. So today's lesson feature the characters Lisa who introduced her family members. Amy practiced blah 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 and did a good job of reading phonics. Amy also did a good job counting and identifying the positive blah blah blah. blah. Dling! Perfect. So that is all done. So now I would delete this and then I could go in and put in the specific, so in my real lesson I would have taken notes over here in the in-class notes and then I could take that what was specific about that lesson and her lesson and then I can put it in here. So this one's really positive so if they just nailed it, this is the only one I would, I would only want to use this one if they nailed it. Otherwise I'd probably would have picked this one which is a little bit uh, less like, oh, they did a great job, did a great job, so I could personalize, like, ooh, she struggled with this, or keep working on this, and then I can type in my name, and that's what I copy and paste to the parent in the parent feedback. So now, 
I have my personal one, and then I still have the feedback template or the templates that are go to this collaborative lesson bank untouched. So that is how you do the formatting for those, and I'm going to show you how to wrap it up after. And then the last one, really quick, that I want to do first are lesson tags. Lesson tags are are blank in the collaborative lesson bank. We never put anything in there. They're just a personal lesson bank thing. So the column is there and how you use it is in your personal lesson bank. This is to tag lessons for something outstanding. So for example, maybe you had this great TPR moment or maybe you had something weird happen like naked dad walked by or uh, maybe you had really bad IT issues or maybe just something that's outstanding that you would want to pinpoint or find that lesson later because sometimes after you've taught a lot you just, they all blur and you don't know so this is just to tag TPR or IT or student no-show or something like that something outstanding so that later if you want to find that lesson it's quicker because then you would just search by that uh, you'd filter that like no-show or TPR or something like that and then it would come up quickly okay so that's how you format everything. Now I want to show you how after you've taught in your, so you use your personal lesson bank to teach live. So say as I'm teaching I notice that oh they updated the lesson so now every, every slide's one off so I go through and I fix those da, 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 as I'm going along. Or maybe I update the lesson goals because they've just done that. They've updated a lot of them to include more information and so I've updated the lesson goal, whatever it is, or I add a prop, or I add a digital thing, something I've added <laughs> or updated. And we want that. We want, if something's wrong, or you have something to contribute, or you like you have a great teaching tip, please add it. We want it in the collaborative lesson bank. So what you want to do is you want to add it, and then what you're going to do is you're going to come over here, and we're only taking the light blue. So. Um, remember light blue but the first thing we want to do is we want to get the SN code so say we're gonna do graces right here which we should just find one that <laughs> we really want to do um, so like these are my okay so we'll just do that so say I'm coming here uh, to, which is graces lesson here say we're gonna update this because maybe it's old I don't think it is old but we're gonna see <laughs> so I come here sorry okay so I came here I highlighted it I'm coming to my personal lesson bank and then I'm going to put it in here and replace it. Okay, let's pretend it's new. Ooh, there was an update. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this uh, the SN code first. So control copy or command copy and then I'm going to come to the lesson bank and while I'm in the master lessons, see I'm in the master lessons, I'm going to do control F and find in sheets going to pop up right here and then I'm going to paste it in here and it's going to populate the lesson. It's going to quickly find it so you don't have to scroll, scroll, scroll or click through. You don't have to do that. No scrolling here. Just find in sheet and it's going to pull up right here and it's going to jump you to that lesson. So now I'm going to jump back to my... I should make these right next to each other. That's another good trick. Oh dear, I've resized it. Oh no, I've pulled it out. That's what's wrong. Sorry. Here we are. So if you notice, orange collaborative lesson bank, personal lesson banks are blue. So your personal bank is blue, collaborative is orange. We made those different colors so that they would pop out so you don't get them confused. Because if you're going back and forth a lot, um, sometimes you might start writing on the wrong one and we don't want that. Um, so now you're in your personal lesson bank. We've got the SN code. We copied it over here and find in sheet. Now we're here. So then you come back to your personal lesson bank and we're going to highlight what we want to copy and put back in this collaborative lesson bank. So we highlight the first cell which is G right here, and then we're going to scroll over to the last one. So there's not two banks or feedbacks, so I'm just going to do till N, but otherwise it would be till O, but not here because we don't want to take our personal stuff. We just want to keep the collaborative stuff. So you hold down shift, select the last one. Now see, it highlighted everything in between those two cells. So now I'm going to right click and copy or control C or command C, copy it, come back over here and I'm gonna start again on the bright orange so see bright blue bright orange there's method to the madness um, and you're gonna don't double click just single click and then control V and it's gonna pop up heads up you're changing something if you're meaning to change it then we click OK I did this so that people don't change things unintentionally just to try and keep the collaborative lesson make it a little safer or clean but if you are meaning to to change something which I am then you click OK 
and then automatically it'll paste it in there. So now my new update is in there. So that is how we teach from our personal lesson bank. We update in our personal lesson bank. If you're writing a new lesson, you're making an entire new entry, you, found, you won the lottery and got one of the lessons that we don't have yet in there, then you fill it out here in your personal lesson bank. And, and, we want, and the reason why we do that is to avoid spending time in the collaborative lesson bank. Because if the more we're in there and you leave it open and you're editing in there, more likely you're gonna make a mistake. But if you're just doing it in your personal lesson bank and then once it's all ready, you copy it from there and throw it in the collaborative lesson bank, it keeps it clean. That's also why <clears throat> even if you're not into the express personal lesson bank, you don't wanna pay for anything, I give you that template for the a la, carte temp, uh, a la carte personal lesson bank because I don't want anyone uh, messing up the collaborative lesson bank. So like you could technically copy your SN code and then jump in between. It would it would take a lot of work to do that, to actually use it that way, but that is why we do it, um, so that we keep the CLB as clean as possible and as tidy. So anyway, that's how we do it. You just copy from your personal lesson bank, slap that bit back in the collaborative lesson bank, and then that's how we keep it, the collaborative lesson bank updated. If you have any questions with formatting, again, you can come to the doc orientation and uh, the one in orange, these orange, uh, these are the explanations of how to do it and what you should be doing, and then this is an explanation of what it should actually look like, or an example. I hope this helps. Um, please let me know if you have any questions at all. I want people to understand and know how to use the Collaborative Lesson Bank because this is the heart and soul of it, that it's collaborative and all the teachers can join in and put in their flavor and their taste. and. And the things that you want personally for your the next time you teach this lesson if you put it in the collaborative lesson bank then it will be there if you put it in your personal lesson bank it will not be there so if you want anything to populate again because it's for the lesson and not for that specific student then you put it on the collaborative lesson bank okay good job you guys peace out <laughs> You guys are lesson bank pros. You know everything. You've been here a while. You did a great job. So now let's talk about how you get started. Look, our little finish line's just around the corner. <laughs> I'm a dork and I know it. Okay, so getting started. Okay, so where to go now? So if you are, oh yeah, I'm an express lesson bank person. I want the PLB, I want it fast. DoorDash is my style. Then you're gonna go to the lesson bank info site. Here it is, it will be in the link below. So don't worry about writing that down. Go to the Lesson Bank info site, you pay 30 bucks one time. If you pay on the site, you'll get an email immediately with, ac with access information. If you use one of the other payment options, um, then you fill out the paid form right after. It's just right after, we're still on the Lesson Bank. You pay and you fill out the paid form and you'll get it within four hours. So this notifies me and I usually get it and I'm able to get back to my computer within four hours. Um, but if you want it, you know you want it, just pay on the website. That's all you gotta do. Go to the site, pay for it. Boom, you're ready to go. You do not have to get ready for the lesson bank. You don't have to do any more training. You don't have to do the quiz. You can just start teaching with the lesson bank. It's easy as that. That is why it's awesome and amazing. We didn't, this is our new feature. We didn't have this. Um, and it and it took a long time. <laughs> and so that's why I finally decided to pay a developer um, to make us the express personal lesson bank. So that's why it's also paid to help pay for that. And I have literally had like a part-time job for a year and a half working or doing the collaborative lesson bank and it's just cost so much. So that is what your 30 bucks is going to. All right, so if you're like, nope, I'm a la carte. I don't wanna pay for anything. Just give it to me free. You're the a la carte type, and this is where you're going to do. To gain access to the CLB, you need to do this training, and then you need to pass the quiz. Once you pass the quiz, so you're going to go here and do get into the CLB. You're going to get your library card. Once you have that, then you're going to copy the a la carte template into your personal into your Google Drive, and then you're going to rename it your personal lesson bank. There is a tab on the CLB that explains how to do that. Then you're going to copy, I'm going quickly because if you're picking this, I'm guessing that you're tech savvy, you can know your way around, free and your style. <laughs> um, so then once you rename it your personal bank, then you're going to copy your schedule into your personal lesson bank from VIP Kid. remember, copy it in, do it in. And then you're going to search for the lesson bank CLB and copy the lesson bank into your personal bank and then you're going to repeat that. So it is easy, it's just a little time consuming. So if you 
if time is money and you've got 30 bucks, just do save yourself the hassle and get the express. If you don't have 30 bucks, that is totally okay. It does not hold you back from using the lesson, the collaborative lesson bank by all means. If you're like, oh yeah, I'm getting the lesson bank and I want the collaborative lesson bank, I want them both. Now here's your collaborative lesson bank. So you've done the training, you're just about done, completed. Da -ding. Now you're gonna go to the lesson bank info site. Same thing as here, the link is below. You're gonna go to the site, training. You're gonna go to the site and you're going to pass the quiz. This is the little quiz. On the site, there's a tab that says CLB uh, workshop, which this video is in, and quiz. And the quiz is right there below and it has this colorful little banner. You're gonna pass the quiz. Once you pass the quiz, now you guys, n please note that in the quiz, I let you guys retake it as many times as you want and you can see your score immediately after once you pass it so you can see your score it says oh you got the full 100 percent good job then you're gonna wait for an email from me give me 24 hours because this is free <laughs> i am doing this all for free give me 24 hours to check my email and 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 i have to add you to one by one so give me 24 hours once it's been 24 hours if you haven't seen anything it is in your junk mail or in your spam it's probably in your spam um, so go and check your junk mail, go and check your spam. I know you're going to email me and tell me I didn't do it. I've only ever had one person that I actually missed. <laughs> and we've done a thousand, I've had a thousand and a hundred. I think we're at 1100 people have entered the CLB since I've started the quiz. So only one have I missed. So really check your junk mail and check your, check your spam. It has been sent to you, but it just often goes there. So once you check it, if it's been 24 hours and you really have checked your junk and your spam and you cannot find it, shoot me an email. Shoot me an email and say, hey, I passed the CLB. I have looked in my junk mail and spam mail and I cannot find it. No problem. Then I'll send it to you again. And I'll just try and send it in a way that usually I send it again. I still can't find it <laughs> because it's just going to your junk mail. Um, but it does not go to from the same email as the, qu the quiz. That's where people get hung up. They go, well, I got the quiz results, but I didn't get your email. It's because that's an automatic email and this is coming from me personally. So that is why. Um, okay, so that's how you get the collaborative lesson making. It's actually pretty easy. You did this workshop, you take the quiz, you're gonna get an email in 24 hours. Now, if you have any questions, if you followed things or I went too quickly or and you just need some help or something crazy is happening and you think you're doing it right, Go to the Lesson Bank info site and read. I have Q and A's there, I have common questions, I have all of it outlined. Your answer is probably in there. If it's not in there, go to Facebook. See if you can, or YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel and check to see if I have a video on it. If I don't have a video on it, go to Facebook, ask the question. There's probably someone on there who already knows the answer and they'll get to you probably quicker than I do. I am on it the most but I'm not always on it. I can't live, I can't live on it. <laughs> um, so that's your best shot at getting a quick answer. If no one's answering, and I'm on there, so that's a, a good way I answer too. But if I don't answer, and no one else answers, like you fell through the cracks or it's a busy day, so no one answered and I didn't see it, then go ahead and shoot me an email. sarahwells.vipkid at gmail.com um, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Don't hesitate. If you want to be doing this and you're just stuck on something, I want to help you. I am totally happy to help you. Um, if it's something crazy, I'm happy to jump on a Zoom call with you. If it's something easy, I'll send you a video that I've already made and then that'll help you or whatever it is. So we'll get you help. We'll get you figured out. So don't worry, just let me know. Okay, you guys, the point of the lesson bank. Oh, hoo, 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 we gotta put me over there. Okay, so your quality goes up and your time spent, the time that you're not getting paid goes down. That is the whole heart of the Collaborative Lesson Bank. Um, I want, um, it takes, I want you to have the information that makes your lessons go better and you're not wasting your time doing it. That's why I made it. Um, <clears throat> also, the five minutes of preparation beforehand it doesn't take five minutes, especially if you have, it takes five minutes or more. It takes about five minutes if you're doing the a la carte method. If you're doing the express, it takes 20 seconds because you're copying it from the, from VIP Kid, putting it in your bank 
and there's a generation generating button boom it's done so it's not even five minutes 30 seconds if you <laughs> do it so for 30 seconds then you can be an in-class ninja warrior you have all that great time management you have all those skills and tips and tricks and note taking and everything in class and then after class you can do amazing feedback that shows parents that you care and that you were paying attention and that you were engaged in the lesson but it didn't take you forever it took you a minute or two we all can wing classes. Once you've taught for a while, you can wing it. We can all wing it. And most of the time that goes okay. But sometimes there's the dang freaking blue door. We have IT issues or something crazy happens or the student's really struggling or there's something or mom, like there's a million things that could happen. And when it's not going perfectly, then it's like the sneaking blue door. And it's really nice to have the resources because when you have the resources, it's not a blue door out of nowhere with a little bit of prep and resources your freaking ninja warrior and you can easily navigate whatever comes up the change of slide a lesson you've never actually taught before whatever it is no big deal okay also for the organizers and the people who want their resources especially new teachers when you, you don't have your regulars down yet um, it's a really nice organizational system to have your every lesson for every student and every note you've ever taken in one place that's mobile and it saves automatically. There's, there's it's not, it's not hard. It's easy. You can take it anywhere. It's easy and fast. That is one of the big benefits to the lesson bank. Um, and also, you have all the resource overviews. You have these huge lesson banks or huge resource banks, and you have all of that at your fingertips. That's also mobile and can go anywhere with you. Um, so there's no longer a choice between quality or quantity and or spending a lot of time or winging it it's literally can be 20 seconds click of a button for a whole day and then you have all these resources that will help you navigate and help save time with feedback and it's still really personal when you do that kind of work it wows parents parents are really impressed by the time that you've taken but you didn't even really take the time but you do have it you can teach a better lesson and your feedback is really detailed and you give better feedback and it didn't take so long it's not it's not faking it it's actually just having the resources so that it all goes more smoothly so it's just like it's being smarter with your time um, and that will help your feedback go up it will help you get booked it will help it helps everything it's amazing um, <clears throat> You guys, stop making things harder. That's my whole thing. Stop making it harder by having better resources. You can do it faster, making you and your classes stronger. You guys, it's dance party time. We did it. Everyone enjoy. Just have a good time. Good job, you guys. Have a great time. I hope this helped. I hope you love the lesson bank. Enjoy. Peace out. I'm done. <laughs>